these up. Uh, as you know, the rams, at least this one, does not come with the outfitter switches that would normally go uh, right down here by the CD player. Actually, they would go right underneath there. Um, the screen itself right here. Um, but this truck didn't come with them. You can buy the switch, but you cannot buy the harness because the harness is integrated with the factory harness. So there's no way to add them in here. So what we've done is I've got a product from Oxbeam. It's in this box. Let's see if we can get this thing open. And this is the product. It's an Oxbeam 8 gang switch. Um, so let's get it unboxed. So that's the uh, SKU number right there. It's Oxbeam. They make some great uh, light bars and quad lights and things like that for vehicles. So I figured I'd give them a try. Um, we'll open this up and see what's inside. That's for another video. All right. Inside the box itself, you have your instructions. You have your little decals for your control head. Right here, it says ox beam on it. Has eight switches. So you can choose whatever you want uh, from compressor to lights to GPS to air lockers, sway bar, disconnect, uh, disconnects, fuel, I mean, you just name it, it's all on here. Um, you have a 60 amp circuit breaker right here. Here you have your mounting hardware along with a fuse tap. In here you have your mounting bracket for your control head and you have your wiring harness. This one, uh, when I open the box up, you'll see this one will go to positive, which will turn the unit on when you turn the vehicle on. So we're gonna use this one with the fuse tap. And then this one right here is the one we'll run inside the vehicle. We'll pull the control unit out itself. Open it up. Here is where the little one red wire will go here. And then the four pin wire, which go inside the cab, which is, this wire is, uh, I believe nine feet long. So it gives you plenty of uh, room to put it anywhere you want. Your positive will mount here from your battery. Your negative will mount here. And then you have your switches, one through eight. As you can see, you have uh, two 30 amp fuses 220 amp, 210, and 25. And based on your power needs is where you hook these up. Um, so it's pretty straightforward, easy, simple to install to give you some added switches. And under the bottom, you will have your um, brackets for your actual control box. I think we're just gonna use double-sided sticky tape just so when we put these in, um, we will be able to still be able to move around and all that good stuff. So 
I think we're going to end up putting our control box right here, just like this. I think we'll probably end up putting our uh, our um, circuit breaker right here on top of here. It's close enough to the uh, battery where we can get power to it and close enough to the control head where we can actually get um, it hooked up power. So um, I'll start by running the power inside that little nine foot cable and start doing some connecting. All right, YouTube, so we have our piece of copper stuck in the inside. It goes through a rubber grommet that's down in here. You probably can't see that, so put some light on it. All right, YouTube, so there's where our copper wire goes through. So basically, um, what I've done is I've got to clean some wires up down there. Is I've uh, attached our wire that needs to go in the cab with a piece of uh, electrical tape. Yes, this is white electrical tape. That's all I had handy, real quick. Uh, and then we'll just pull this back through, and it should pull this through. I've tied it off here so I don't actually pull the whole, uh, accidentally pull the whole thing through. So go back in here. Right, you, as you can see, I created a new power wire because uh, the other one was too short. I want to take this and put it back here on top of this. Uh, as you can see, we're using double-sided sticky tape to stick it on because uh, this is normally where your aux fuses, your auxiliary fuses, or PTO and all the other good stuff would go is inside that box. But since we don't have that, uh, I'm just going to double sided sticky tape to it so we can still be able to get to it. Run our power wire this way, come around and connect to our power here, and then use the one from here to here uh, for the box. So I'll get that installed and we'll go from there. And then what we'll do is also is uh, Use double-sized sticky tape to stick this right on top of our fuse box right here. That way we still have access to our fuse box and be able to get in it in case we need to. Um, so yeah, I'll do that and we'll be back. All right, YouTube. Uh, I went ahead and hooked up the power wire, ground wire, mounted my uh, circuit breaker to the positive. Uh, it's screwed in, so it's pretty sturdy. Um, the actual brain itself right here will be uh, either velcroed or double sided sticky tape to this because uh, we still need to be able to get access to our fuses. Um, the red wire I ran into a switched 12 volt. Um, as soon as I clean all these wires up. These belong to the multimeter. <clears throat> anyway, inside of here I used that fuse right there, with the, um, <clears throat> with the fuse tap right here, um, and that's 12 volts when the key is on. So it's one, two, three, four, five. There's another one underneath, so it's the last one on the row next to the uh, purple 30. So if you ever need a 12 volt switch source, that would be it. <clears throat> so now, only thing we got left to do is finish wiring the rest of our 
uh, components which are sitting right here. They're labeled wheel lights, rock lights, uh, so on and so forth. So <clears throat> we need to get these wired up into our box in their appropriate um, location and we'll be good to go. And then we need to come inside and mount our switch, which I haven't uh, decided on where we're gonna mount it yet, but it's probably gonna be down here. And you can see when I hit the button, the switch turns on. I turn it off and it goes off. Um, so there you go. The only time I really need this running is when the vehicle is on for like my train horns to make sure they're active and things like that. So uh, more to follow after I get everything finished up, I'll show you what everything looks like. Hopefully I can see this, but I'm using these yellow ferrules uh, to put on the wires to stick into the little screw holes. Uh, that way it has a nice solid bite. see they make a nice little square so when you stick it in there the screw actually has something to bite down on so we're going to take these out and we'll use these tins All right, YouTube, we got our box. We have it Velcro down in case we need to move it. We've done some uh, wire management with these uh, flex looms. Um, so <clears throat> this is what it looks like on the inside. Again, I use those little ferrules to connect everything. We have our red wire going to our fuse box to a switch uh, voltage. And then we have the four pin going into the cab. I still have four slots available. So if I want to add light bars and anything else in the future, I'll be able to do that. We have our um, circuit breaker up here mounted next to our uh, power wire for our stereo. And we'll go in here. this up and we have our uh, switches down here bring it outside where y'all can see so we have our switch box velcro down here out of the way <clears throat> We have our wire running from the uh, 
engine compartment down up goes down underneath here comes down over here and I did that that's way I can be able to pull this out if I need to add more buttons because uh, there's a couple buttons that I need to cover up uh, until we get some more things added so overall pretty good installation um, as always thank you again for all the new subscribers hit the button like subscribe and on to the next one peace